Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a very promising looking action platformer called Olympia Rising by developer Paleozoic. Uh, now this is one that I really really was excited to cover. I've, I know I cover a lot of action platforms and platformers in general on the channel but this one's got to be in the top tier of all of the ones that I've discovered in recent memory, in fact in all memory. Uh, now I did play through this demo, it's maybe about 10 minutes long or so, and well I suppose probably the first time you go through it'll take a little bit longer than the second time uh, but it's really really good stuff it's got a great art style fantastic controls the soundtrack from what i could hear of it is fantastic also so far although it's just two songs that are going to loop back and forth between each other and unfortunately it doesn't have any uh sound effects yet but you know what's here is actually really really quite fun uh, so let's press x to start and i have in fact mapped all the controls over to my 360 controller so uh it's not going to be an issue uh, the controls are going to feel just as intuitive as i think they were meant to because, uh, I don't know, playing on keyboard just doesn't feel quite the same for me. So, let's get into things, shall we? We've got a very beautiful-looking pastel landscape out in front of us, and we're going to uh, read some little scrolls here. So it says, In the fields of Asphodel, at the edge of Hades, you gave your last mortal breath. So there's a picture of me, you know, at the fields of Asphodel turning into a ghost. And over here we see, you see a couple of spirits wandering around, being all strange and silly. Uh, it's a very kind of cutesy <laughs> depiction of the afterworld, I suppose. Or the afterlife. Uh, in the afterlife, your memories of the great battles and hardships were erased. Your soul was soothed. All right, good to know. Got a beautiful little fountain here with a fish blowing up some water, and there should be another scroll. Uh, if you're reading my notes, then you know the danger has returned. The answers to your past lie in Olympia, and I guess that would be our staging for what would be. Our little adventure that's about to come. Well, I shouldn't say little. It seems to be quite a vast adventure from what I've seen uh, from the Kickstarter. This game was actually successfully kickstarted, and I believe is now working its way through Greenlight, trying to get approved there, and uh, should be just in production. But anyway, let's keep going. Check out this fantastic art style. I love all of the details here. Oh God, it's Cerberus. Tried to gank me or something. Anyway, uh, I avoided him. Let's move on a little bit further, and I keep really wanting to slash these. Uh, torches in the hopes that I'm gonna get like a heart out of them or something, but I don't think that's quite the way it works here So there are a few main UI elements that are probably worth going over Look at that giant set of red eyes in the background uh, We've got two out of zero coins. We'll find out what that means in just a moment We've got three heart pieces and a magic meter as well as a little uh, kind of like a profile portrait sort of doom like in that as we take damage uh, our character will look more and more disheveled there uh, so that is actually a magic potion canister thing that's going to add to our magic bar and dash through the air and smite enemies using the power air after double jumping hold x along with a direction so what that means is i can actually double jump and that didn't actually work okay maybe i don't actually have enough magic yet oh there we go that's what i was meant to do right so i can do that and it can make me do some strange things i probably shouldn't have done that in fact because that used up the rest of my magic but you know whatever i just wanted to demonstrate it uh, to you guys and one of the things that I mentioned earlier, the controls in this feel fantastic. Adding in the air ability and the ability to jump around and double jump as it is in the first place, uh, you just have, like, fantastic abilities to navigate this environment. And I think, if anything, this is going to be a really, really promising speed game. Because uh, just in the first couple of levels, I've already gotten the feeling like I'm going to want to really dash around through everything. Oh, and this is the awesome part of the soundtrack, by the way, that I'm talking over right now. Uh, Use your blade to slay any creature that bars your path. Press C to swing. Okay. I'll just be quiet for a second. Okay, sometimes I get hung up on these edges a little bit, but nothing I can't figure out after a second. Alright, so we've got another scroll. Use magic to destroy enemies from a distance, hold down and press C to cast. So it's giving us a little bit more magic, and we're gonna do that. And cast a little flamethrower on them. And also slash these guys. So the other cool thing is there's actually chain combos in this. And we'll be able to demonstrate that a little bit better in the next area. So we've got to give some coins to this fellow here. Your toll is paid, you must collect 30 coins in the next level. And this is sort of the structure that I've seen so far. We seem to go uh, do sort of like a combat-oriented level, then we do sort of an escape level. Where there's some sort of green fire chasing us and we want to do our best to try and get out of the way and collect coins as quickly as possible without taking damage obviously without going so slowly that the fire catches up with us and kills us oh that's also a treasure bag right there which just gave me i think 10 coins uh, so we're in a good uh, bit of shape as far as you know accomplishing our goals 
I'm gonna show you probably on the fourth level uh, a whole series of chain combos. Well, I'm gonna go for them anyway. You know, this is also reminding me a little bit... Oh, jeez, I didn't realize I was so low on health. Okay, I've got to be a little bit more careful. I guess I'll give him all my coins and try that again. Maybe do it a little faster this time. Uh, but this is also reminding me a little bit of They Bleed Pixels, only I think with much more accessible controls. Uh, given that there's only jump and attack, it seems like it would be super simple, but after, you know, realizing there's all these magic abilities and you can double jump and all of that on top of it, plus the combat feels really fluid, and the little bit of slowdown before you uh, hit everything lets you sort of frame your jumps and attacks a little bit better. So I, all in all, I think it just feels fantastic for mobility. Also, the ability to cling to walls is pretty lovely too. Although I'm not sure I can, like, do any kind of Mega Man X style, you know, wall jumping. Uh, well, okay, I can jump up them. I can't quite slide down. Oh, or can I? I actually can. Okay, I'm an idiot. Uh, take back whatever I just said. All of those things were untrue. This is uh, very much akin to Mega Man X style wall jumping. Done! Alright, I backpedaled. It's, it's happened. This time, though, let's actually do this for real, though. And we'll take the most awkward route around the side of this pillar. When you use the air ability combined with some double jumping and things, you can actually do some strange styles of jump that I haven't really seen done anywhere else, where you can almost magnetize yourself to walls. And provided you can keep up a pretty high magic bar, you shouldn't ever really run out. Uh, there's enough opportunities to gain magic pretty frequently, and there seems to be more pots than you even need, so... I'm sure there are some very optimized routes waiting ahead for us to figure out later in life. Uh, for now, though, I'm just really, really hoping to get to see more of this game in the future, and I'm so hyped to play more of it in general. Uh, from what I saw, they were kind of going for, like, a Ghosts and Goblins or Wizards and Warriors style, like overworld map that we're going to hopefully be able to uh, make a little ways up as we go. Sort of like a big old tower that we're going to keep climbing as we make our way out of the underworld. Alright, my toll has been paid. Now I've got a bigger combat-oriented map. Or I should say maybe exploration-oriented. I don't know which is the better way to de uh, describe that. Using the power of air, hold up while jumping after regular double jump to reach even greater heights. Yep, that's a thing. But I didn't actually really need to, because I could just jump up the walls anyway, right? I mean, I could do all kinds of things. It turned into a cannonball. I wonder if there's going to be more abilities, though. Uh, create chains by slaying multiple foes, foes in succession without landing. Chaining earns you more coins per kill, right? That's uh, not really that big of a thing. This just kind of comes pretty naturally as you're moving around. The coins have never been an issue, really. Um, I'm hoping later on, maybe, that it might even be a little bit more challenging, and, you know, I'm also kind of hoping maybe we can gain more in the way of heart pieces or life, uh, just in case, while well, we have to fight some difficult bosses or something, because that level was actually quite trivial. In fact, all of them are, once you know the controls well enough. I'm just still getting acclimated. I have only played a few minutes of it, like I said earlier. And now we've got another vertically-oriented level. Let's just kind of rush up through this. We need 60 coins, we've got 64. The, apparently the coins actually carry over if you don't die, so I just need to be careful how I move through this. Oh, new enemy, got him stuck in the wall already. I can't not break every game I play, evidently. It's just a rite of passage. If your game's gonna be on indie impressions, be prepared, I will accidentally break it. I don't do it malevolently or maliciously, it just happens, unfortunately. But, you know, game's not done. In fact, this is just a demo anyway, so no worries. That guy got pretty wrecked. And up we go. I'm not even picking up the coins anymore. I don't even really need them as long as they don't die. Broke a hundred. Oh yeah, I should use my flamethrower a little bit more. Anyway, there we go. I made it through. Uh, so thank you for playing Kickstarter coming soon. No worries. Kickstarter came and went, actually. So this is already done. Uh, I'm going to, of course, urge you in the direction of this version that you can try right now. There will be a link in the description for this. Uh, you can play it right in your browser so you don't even have to download anything. I do recommend mapping controls to a 360 controller unless you prefer... Uh, going with the whole, you know, keyboard thing, but, you know, Joy to Key works just fine if you need that, it is free. Uh, or at least the older versions were free, I'm not sure if it is anymore, feel free to let me know in the comments. And in general, feel free to chime in on this one, uh, what you think, because I think this could be a huge game, uh, provided this does get finished and comes out at least as well, you know, roughly on the same level as what I'm seeing here in this demo. Uh, we should have nothing to worry about. I think this game is going to be fantastic. Can't wait to see the sound effects, or rather, hear the sound effects, and see what else this game puts you through. I uh, can't wait to fight some big bosses and, you know, 
really try and optimize my path through the game and really, you know, master the controls because they feel great already. And I think once I get a better handle on, on them even, they're going to get even better. So go play the game. Tell me what you think in the comments. Leave a like on the video. Come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I had a fantastic time playing this. And I will see you all tomorrow.